Hi, I'm Amy with Superior Threads, and today we're gonna do a rope bowl or rope coasters or a rope placemat, anything to do with rope. I brought a couple to show you. The first thing I ever did were little coasters like this, um, which are the easiest, and that's the start of how you would do a bowl. Um, here's one that I've done with a rope that's covered in fabric, and we'll talk about that as well. This is one of the first ones I did. This actually sits in my um, kitchen on the counter and I keep all my bread in it. So um, I've used this for many years, it's really great. This one I did just um, last week when I was planning this video for you, I was looking at some rope and I found this really cool green rope um, that's made for macrame projects and I just loved it, um, the color, so I stitched it with Omni V. I'm pretty sure I stitched it with. It's a variegated thread. I'll have to go back and find it for you. And it's got some of this pretty green color in it, but it's also got other colors. And by not wrapping this in fabric, I've created a pattern with my thread on this one. This is another one. When I first started learning how to do rope bowls, I bought a kit from some really nice girl at a quilt shop years and years ago. So if this is from your kit, let me know, comment on here, and I'll give you credit. I'm sorry. I was, um, when I bought this kit for this bowl, this little basket, I wasn't working professionally in the industry. Now if I buy anything, I always take a picture of where I bought it from. So I bought a kit to do this one. And the reason I liked it so much is because it's got some fabric, but some just plain rope in it. I don't know if you guys just heard that growl, but that's my Olaf dog. He's on the floor and wanting Finley to rub his belly. So Finley, we'll have to introduce him because I'm going to have to talk to Finley when I do this kind of stuff. Finley's the, I'm going to call you the producer <laughs> of all things ST and um, he's behind the camera right now. So he keeps me on track. Finley, you're going to have to put a picture across this video so people can see what you look like. So this bowl I really liked, but I did buy a kit and did this one. Sometimes I've done a ton of uh, coasters. They're great gifts. They're great stocking stuffers, um, housewarming gifts. You can, I made this one because I have a big plant that's tall and I wanted something pretty around the ugly pot. So I made this one, the plant's going to sit in that. I started to make this one. I'm not done with it yet. I just put a pin in it so I can um, keep adding to it. I have a round, um, this could be a placemat, um, but I have a big round table in my kitchen and I actually wanted to make this to cover the whole table. So I'm just gonna keep going and going on this, but this one's a work in progress. And I just bought a jelly roll to do this one on. So that's an example of what we're gonna do today. I brought different ropes because I wanna talk about the different ropes you can buy. This rope is an all cotton rope. There's no uh, polyester, there's nothing synthetic, it's not treated. Um, and you can see that it's pretty pliable. If I hold it like this, this hangs right down on that. This is actually the easiest type to work with because it is really forgiving. But you don't always get a really good structure with this looser rope. So here's another rope. This is actually, they look identical, but they're actually not. This one is a uh, polypropylene wrapped cotton, cotton wrapped polypropylene, which if you notice, if I hold it out, see how this comes out a little bit more. So it's a little bit stiffer and, but it's still pretty pliable, pretty soft. So it's okay for me to stitch through this, but it's going to give my bowls a little bit more structure or my basket or whatever you're making a little bit more stiffness because it has that extra core in here. And then here's another piece of rope. I actually haven't tried this one, but you can see how much it just sticks out straight. This is pretty stiff rope. What this is, this is actually true clothesline. Real clothesline roping is treated to be out in the element so it doesn't rot when it gets rained on and the sun hits it and things like that. So the fact that it's treated makes it much stiffer. I actually haven't tried this one yet. I'm gonna try this um, probably in the next couple of weeks because I have um, a basket that may, I kinda wanna sit outside and it may get wet. And so I'm gonna try to use this. It still feels like my needle would go through it fine. It feels a little bit like denim, but it's much stiffer. So when you're starting out, get a looser rope that's not quite this stiff. I've also found that you can buy rope this is the same rope i did this green basket in only it's just not colored it's not dyed and this i bought because it is macrame rope and 
that seems to be a little bit more economical. You get more for it um, than you can buying it in these links. Now I want to warn you against not buying just any rope. So I was actually up visiting my daughter a couple weeks ago and she had bought this rope for a craft project and didn't need all this much, but this is how much she got. I tried to make a bowl, a basket or a bowl with it and it's really loose. I don't know if you can see that on here, but you can see that the twist is super loose and it's just coming undone. I mean, just, just the end of it right away. This actually doesn't hold together well enough to make a bowl or a basket because once you catch it, it starts to pull away from itself. So I was pretty thrilled when I, she gave me this whole thing of yarn thinking I'd make baskets, but I think it's just gonna be good for a macrame project. It's not gonna be good for a bowl. So make sure that it's not too loosely twisted. All right, so now I have the, the rope that I wanna use. And um, we're just gonna make a simple round bowl. And when I stop it, I'll talk about, this is where you would stop for a placemat or a coaster. And coasters are the easiest thing to do first if you're learning, uh, just whip out some coasters, right? You know, it'll be fast, easy, and you'll get the hang of it. But I'm gonna take my rope and I'm gonna, this part's a little hard, so hopefully you can see that. I'm gonna start twisting it, or coiling it like a snake on top of itself. And I'm just gonna keep holding it and twisting. I'll move my fingers out and just out of the way in just a second. It's not quite tight enough. Let me get that a little tighter. Tighter. So I'm just gonna keep twisting like that until it's about the size of a quarter or a half dollar, right? Okay, so about a quarter. Then I'm gonna take a pin and I'm gonna stick it in the side and then I'm gonna take another pin and stick it in this side so that it's holding itself together. Let's see how that looks. So it's a circle like a snail, snake all the way around and I'm just pinning it to hold it in place for right now. I think this is the hardest part of the whole process so it's really not that hard so it's a pretty easy project and I love easy. So I'm going to take it now and I'm going to just give myself some slack, set my rope right there and you have to keep in mind whatever color you're going to want to use for your bowl you have to put it in your bobbin because when you it'll make sense in a minute when you start to form your bowl what's actually going to show on the outside is the thread in your bobbin what shows on the inside is the thread you have your machine threaded with so i've loaded up a couple of bobbins here and um, i'm using omni v 9068 which is this really pretty variegated uh, multicolored thread which I think will stand out against this white rope really well. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take this circle that I've made and I'm just going to stitch straight across here and straight across here and um, I like to stitch it with a straight stitch first and then I'll go back and do it with a um, zigzag stitch. So I'm going to take it right here and I'm going to put it in my machine and this is just going to hold it for right now. And I'm going to take a few stitches, go back. Let me slow my machine down just a little bit. Let me get settled. I haven't, Finley made me move my machine. <laughs> so I'm not know where my foot is. Okay, there we go. Okay, there we go. I'm just going to stitch it straight. Then lock my stitches. Okay, now I'm just going to actually pick it up and rotate, pick my foot up, I'm sorry, keep my needle down, pick my foot up, and I'm going to rotate it around, then put my foot back down, trim off my excess so they don't get caught. Now I'm going to go back to the middle of this coil. And I'm going to take my pins out. Now I'm going to pick up my foot and I'm going to cross the stitch seam that I just did. 
I'm going to go forward, catch that edge, and backwards and catch that edge. Okay. Let me pull this out so you can see what I did. Trim off my thread. Okay. Let's see if you can see that. It's a just a simple stitched X across the center. So it's going to look like this. Now I'm going to change this. I'm going to change my machine to a normal zigzag stitch. I'm going to shorten for this rope. I'm going to actually shorten my zigzag stitch just a little um, width wise. When you're doing this, you just want it wide enough to catch both sides of your rope. Um, and the wider, least dense zigzag stitch, the less you're going to notice the thread. The denser the stitch, the more you're going to notice the thread. So um, if I was doing this with the matching thread onto this rope, I wouldn't need such a small zigzag stitch because it's going to disappear in with the rope. But since I'm using a really pretty thread right now, I want it to show. So I'm going to shorten my length and make it a little bit denser. So, okay, so I'm going to stick this back in and I want to make sure that when I'm rolling it, I am going to be turning I'm going to be rotating it counterclockwise because that'll be the easiest on your machine. So if I have it flipped this way and I start to rotate it, I'm rotating clockwise so that automatically tells me I've got it flipped over. So I want to flip it or when I start to keep the coil going, I'm rotating it counterclockwise. So I'm going to stick it back in my machine. Let me start from here to here. I'm going to back up a little bit and start back here and not right where I left off. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to st just start stitching and I'm going to lock my stitches just so they don't go anywhere and I'm going to just start twisting and stitching a zigzag stitch and while I'm doing this I'm twisting as well turning keeping my coil going okay I'm going to trim off my threads because I don't want them to get stuck and they'll be harder to, to remove if I don't trim them off now. So I'm going to just keep stitching and I'm catching one side of the zigzag is hitting the tighter coil of the rope. The outside of the zigzag is hitting the, the new layer of coil on the rope. And I'm just going to keep going around. And after I've gone around about two times, I'm going to stop with my needle down and I'm actually going to do another X through the whole thing when it's gotten about, oh, I would say two inches wide. Um, that I found you might not need to do that. And if you don't want to, it's totally fine. Um, but I have found that when I do this, it holds that bottom of my basket or bowl or whatever I'm doing flat and nice and neat. So I'm going to keep my zigzag stitch and I'm just going to go all the way across the circle. Then I'm going to zigzag over around the circle a quarter of the way, stop, turn it again, and zigzag right back across. And then that puts me just about an inch away from where I left off stitching. So now I'm just going to continue what I was doing. turning as I stitch and I'm making sure I like to put the rope on the ground because it helps me get the kinks out. There we go. Um, making sure you keep this flat because if you start to lift it up, it's gonna, not going to lay flat. So when you're starting the bottom of the basket um, or bowl or whatever you're going to make, um, make sure you keep this nice and flat on your machine. So I'm just going to keep going around. So I'm just going to keep stitching and rotating and rotating and stitching. And I actually have pretty long fingernails today. Got them done for the video. Um, and it's helping me keep it up close, the rope up close to the next rope, the next layer. 
but if you don't have good finger strength or a nice long nail, you can use a stiletto. I have a stiletto right here, and you can use it to hold the rope right next to it as you're stitching. And I'll have to give, I'll show you my stiletto. It's actually really pretty. Let's see if you can see that. I have to give a shout out to um, Beth at Show Me Quilting is a quilt shop in Raytown, Missouri. And I bought, was in her shop. She has a beautiful shop. This was years ago. And I was in her shop and she makes these stilettos and I bought one from her. So I use it almost daily. So thanks Beth. And so I'm just gonna keep going until the bottom of my basket is the diameter that I want. So here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and go faster. to make coasters this is the point I would stop at um, if you're gonna make a placemat I'd go bigger the size of a placemat but uh, so you can see how easy and fast coasters are but the way to so if you're gonna do a coaster and want to stop right here the way to finish these are all the same um, unless you're going to do something decorative oh, wherever that I'll, I'll bring that other one out like a curl so I'll show you at the end of this how to finish it off um, but it would be the same no matter when you stopped. I have a little, this looks like a place the rope is joined. I'm just going to cut off the extra little fringe that's on there so it doesn't look like the bowl is unraveling. There we go. So you can see how keeping it flat, I just kept putting my hand on here, keep going around. So now this is the bottom of the bowl. On the other side, you can see I've, it's got the same pretty thread on there because that's going to be the part people see. So now I want to start making it into a bowl shape. So I'm going to stick my hand under here and I'm going to lift it up at an angle against my sewing machine just like this. And I'm going to keep doing zigzag stitches and but I'm going to hold it at an angle which is going to create that curve to make it go up the sides of the bowl. If I wanted a really shallow bowl with less of an angle I could hold it about like this as well but for this one I want to hold it up pretty pretty tightly. So I'm just going to keep going. Finley just asked me if what do I do when I run out of rope? I'm not going to cut this one. Let me see if I can get to the other end. I'm going to pretend we're at the end. This is the other end of my rope. But when, um, if I want to run out of rope and add it, I'm just going to cut it at an angle. Let's say this is the end of my rope and this is the beginning of my new rope. I cut it at an angle and I'm just going to push them together with the angles together. Kind of like you're pr when you prune a tree, I guess. I will wrap it with some um, masking tape to hold it just very little or you can glue it and then once um, I get close to it and I run my stitches over there you can pull the tape off. Sometimes you can just hold it on there together and it'll work especially when you're working with a thicker rope. The thinner, the smaller diameter rope it's a little bit harder but it goes together just like that and once it's together you can't even tell that it's been joined. So let's keep going on this bowl and I saw that I just missed, I don't know if you can see it here, there's one little spot that I just missed my edges. You can see my finger coming through right there. Um, I just noticed it. Now, if you don't notice this till the end of your bowl, um, you can always stick it back in there and re-stitch it. You can stitch it, whip stitch it with a needle and thread, or I know where this is, so I'm gonna stick a pin right here so I know when I get around to this side, I can jump over and restitch that down. So I'm going to keep going. Okay, now I'm right where the hole is, so I'm actually going to knot my thread, pick it up, 
move it over to where the hole is, take my pin out, stitch it. You're never going to see this because it's right over the other stitching. It's just slightly moved over. Okay, I'm going to trim that. threads. You can see how pretty it's already turning out to be with all these colors. Um, so I fixed that really quick. I'm just going to go back to where I was, start stitching again, and keep going. It up on camera but I'm pretty much letting my feed dogs move the bowl at this point and my hands just right here for support I'm holding it gently with the ends of my hands so I'm not physically turning the bowl my feed dogs are doing it now when it was flat I had to kind of turn it a little bit to get it going but it's got enough now that it the machine just takes it backed up about an inch and going to sew straight over what I just did. I'm going to trim off my threads. Hi Oaf, how you doing? I think that looks like a pretty good shallow bowl. Okay, so what I'm going to do to finish this off is there's lots of different ways you can do it. I think one of the easiest ways is actually one of the most decorative ways. Let me grab this bowl again. Where, I don't know if you can see that, this little um, rosette circle on there. Here it is right here. Um, you can actually glue it. Um, down or you can stitch it down depending on what you want to do. Those are really fun and it's an easy way to tie up your rope. But if you don't want anything decorative on it, what I'm going to do is here's the rest of my rope. I'm going to angle it into my bowl at an angle and I'm going to show you this when I finish stitching. I'm going to stitch it just enough and then I'm going to reverse it back stitch completely over it back down okay now I'm done with that I'll pull it out trim my threads so I'll show you what I did on the inside right here I just pulled it down into it and then kept stitching over it I don't know if you can see it from that far away and then I'm just going to go right in here and trim it off right as close as I can without cutting my stitches. And there, you can't even tell when the bowl is done. It's just got this nice little place where it goes down in here. And so there's our rope bowl. It's nice and stiff. I can put stuff in it. You can make handles. Just get creative with it. I mean, you can do whatever you want with these. Um, I've done them with little handles. I've done them with, I've bought those um, wooden, purse handles and leather straps and you can put those on there. Maybe I'll make one of those another time show you how to attach um, some straps to it and everything like that. It's super fun and unlimited, fast. I mean, how fast was that, Finley? Not, I don't even have a watch on, but an hour or so and I've got a project and I'm done. And you can uh, launder these. You can put them in the wash and I would not dry them in the dryer. I would form them back out and let them dry out on their own air dry. But that's what's great, so if they get dirty, you can launder them. Let me show you really quick how to add fabric to these if you want that look as well. So I'll do that in just a minute. Let me get ready for you. So now I'm going to show you how to wrap fabric on it. It's the same method of making the bowl. We're just going to put fabric around the rope. Um, so I've done my starter. I call this the start snail because that's what it looks like to me. But you're just going to coil it up to about two inches wide. I've crisscross stitched it just like I showed you. 
um, and it's ready to, to keep going. So I have all my rope here. I have a, some strips of fabric. I like my strips to stay about one inch. It really does not matter. They could be three quarters, they could be a half inch, they could be an inch and a half, and you can combine different widths of different fabric. It's totally up to you, so you be creative on what you're doing. So I just rough cut them, and then I'm gonna put them right here on my rope, and I'm gonna twist it, and I'm gonna just start wrapping this. And if you can't hold and wrap, you get really good. You can hold and wrap it. But if you can't, I'm just gonna take a pen. Well, if I can get it out there. I'm just gonna take a pen and stick it right here in this beginning part while I wrap so it doesn't come undone. So I'm just gonna take this and I'm just gonna keep wrapping. And the way the rope lays on itself you don't have to be good at it. You can just like, just keep twisting and twisting around it. So I'm just gonna keep going. Pull my thread up. It doesn't help that I'm sitting on it. And I'm just gonna keep Twisting. Wrap this. Now there is, I'll show you guys in a minute, there is another way you can wrap your rope with fabric. If you're a perfectionist, you might like the second way better. Um, but I am more of get the job done type of girl. <laughs> so I like to do the easiest way, maybe not necessarily the neatest way. So I've gone down to the end. I'm just gonna overlap this so it catches it. So I didn't have to sew them together or anything. I'm gonna keep going. I'll just put these two strips on and show you. So if I was going to do an entire bowl like I did this bowl right here, is covered, the whole bowl is covered in fabric. I actually wrapped um, most of this bowl, the rope ahead of time before I ever started it. I just wrapped the whole rope. But um, since I didn't want the whole piece to be fabric, I wanted some of this natural um, rope to show through. I'm just going to do one little section. So now I'm at the end and it's all wrapped around my rope. I'm going to stick a pin in this. Again, you can use glue, but I'm just going to stick a pin in so it stays right where it is. And now I have switched out my thread to a thread that matches the rope because I want you to notice the fabric. So I'm going to hold this together. Let's see if you can, let me hold this up. So you can see how this is going to just start to go like this and it's going to be fabric covered now. So I'm just going to hold it together, stick it back in my machine, anchor my thread down, I'm going to pull out the pen so I don't stitch over it, and then I'm just going to start stitching the exact same way I did before. The difference on this piece I'm doing now, let me trim some of these threads, and the, the bowl I just did, I did elongate my zigzag stitch and I separated a little bit more. Since it matches the rope, you're not gonna notice the thread on this one, so I can get away with a much bigger um, stitch, which will make it go faster, basically. You could still do a smaller stitch if you want, but if you wanted it to go faster, you could move it up. So going. Getting close to the end of my fabric. I'm going to get as close to my pin without stitching over it. Remove the pin. And now I'm back to just rope. Go a couple more times around. Okay, that looks 
looks about the size of a coaster. So what I'm going to do for the coaster, because I don't want to lump in it so the glass doesn't tip over, I'm going to go ahead, I don't know if you can see this, I'm going to go ahead and cut the angle first before I stitch it. So we're going to cut at an angle so I have like it tapers, there's a good word, so my rope tapers down and I'm just going to hold it with my handy dandy stiletto and finger so I don't stitch my finger. If you've ever done that once, you never want to do it again. I'm going to hold it with my stiletto. I'm going to stitch it down and then go back and stitch it again. Go back. Stick that in there a little bit better. There we go. I'm going to pull it off. I'm going to trim this edges off right here. And what I do is I'm going to go back and put um, fray check on it so it doesn't come undone. But if you look how pretty that is with the um, fabric sewn in the middle of it and then regular uh, roping all the way around it. And there's a pretty little coaster for you to set your drink on. So another way to wrap your um, rope, I don't really like this method, it takes a long time, but it does look pretty neat when you do that, is you can go long ways with your fabric and you're gonna wrap it around like you're making a casing for the rope and then you're just gonna stick it under here and you're gonna stitch straight down the center of the rope with the fabric, whoops, sorry, and a straight stitch. I didn't change my machine over, let me change it over, okay? And I'm just gonna keep wrapping the rope longwise, and I'm just gonna make sure I catch the, the fabric. And then I'm gonna wrap and catch the fabric. and wrap and catch the fabric. So this is another way, let me pull this out so you can see it. So now this rope is gonna be covered lengthwise with fabric. Um, see if you can see it here, how it's just all, instead of curling it like this, we're gonna cover that like a casey. Now the reason, um, this looks a little bit neater is so you don't have raw edges rotating around. But I like that look because it kind of gives a little bit more texture. This looks a little neater when the project is finished, but it's twice as much sewing and uses um, less fabric but twice as much stitching because you have to stitch your whole rope this way, give it all covered on the parts you want it, and then start your coil. Um, so that's a, a, another way to um, wrap the rope but I prefer the twisted method mostly because sometimes I don't know what I want to put on it and the last minute I'm like hey let's could use some fabric so let's just stick some on there so the twist method lets you add it at any time but both are correct so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial I'd love to see pictures of any bowls coasters placemats or if you come up with anything else to make with these rope and uh, don't be afraid to use some really great colorful thread like I have on some of these bowls. It just is, makes them pop and you can create kind of a second texture with them. So let me know what you think. Thank you. A messy workspace is a sign of the best creative creativity. creativity. <laughs> so, um, well, where's the end? Okay, now we're in a hot mess express totally right now. I blame Finley. <laughs> Asking the question, where's the end? I have no end. Seriously, I don't, oh, there it is, finally. <laughs> okay, so usually I don't, ha I have it all laid out. I'm gonna compile all the parts of you just like <laughs> untangling the rope. <laughs> That's gonna be the bloopers this time. Helpful hit, uncoil your rope first. <laughs>